together. This is a nice system of equations because when you add them together, what's going to happen? One cancels out. Yeah. Which one? Y. Y cancels out. 3x plus x is 4x. 2y plus negative 2y is 0. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, 3 plus negative 7 is negative 4. Then you divide by 4. Then you divide by 4, and x is? Negative 1. Negative 1. I do that so long. And then you plug in x in one of the equations. 1. choices for examples. Uh, that one that we just did was like ideal. It was set up. When we add the, the equations together, the elimination happens. But for this one, it's going to need a little help in order to make it so that we get canceling when we add the equations together.
Other questions? This one needs a little help. It needs us to manipulate one, maybe both, of the equations so that one of those things will cancel out. Kylie? Uh, put a positive two in. Or put a negative two in. Okay, what do you mean by put? Okay, so we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by two. So two times, well, we'll write the first equation again. 4x plus 5y equals 14. Multiply by 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4x. 2 times 3y is 6y. 2 times 4 is 8. Mm -hmm. It is added together. We get 0x is 6y plus 5y is 11y. 14 plus 8 is 22. Divide by 11y is 2. Now we need to plug 2 in for y. 4x mm -hmm. plus 5 times 2 equals 14. 4x, this is 10. Subtract 10 from both sides. So we get 4. x is 1. 1, 2. I only got one of those little ones. I got both of them. Same. Same. Do you have a question, Bridget? Yeah. Um, I wrote the equation instead of writing plus 5 times 2. I wrote plus 10, and then on top, I wrote 5, and then in parentheses 2 to show what it like equals. Can I do that since I did say it's an equation? You just kind of cut corners a little bit. As long as I can tell what's going on. Yeah. So, like, maybe up here, you're saying up here you did like this. Mm -hmm. And then you just wrote 10 right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just did that. that makes sense. Okay. So uh, let's solve some more systems. Uh, let's go ahead and use um, elimination to solve this system of equations. Okay. Let's all take our notes. It's notes time. Okay. Go ahead and solve this system. So multiply by a negative 1. We'll choose that. Well, it may seem like it didn't work, but if we've done all our work correctly and something weird happened, it doesn't mean that it didn't work. It just means, well, something weird happened when we try to solve this system. Then it doesn't, there's no, you don't have a, y. you don't have an X or a Y. So, since we're sure that we did our work right, it must mean that there's some new kind of conclusion we have to draw. So what, when I try to eliminate these x's, I wind up eliminating the y's as well. Right, so we get 0 on this side. Hmm. And on the other side, we get 8. 0 equals 8. No, no solution. So no solution. You think it means no solution. What else could it possibly mean? A different way to do it. We need, we need, we need to learn a new method for solving. Maybe. Maybe. What's that? Substitution. Maybe we should try substitution. You know, maybe uh, you know, elimination just won't work. That could be. Well, it, I, for other things, it couldn't have other things, but for this, it's no solution. Because it's 3x plus 2y equals 10, and 3x plus 2y equals 2. Yeah, how could that be? Yeah. Right? Clint's showing that he understands what we're looking for. We're looking for an x and a y, the same x and y for both equations, like 1 and 5, something like that. But there's just no way we are going to find an x and a y that we can plug it here and then duplicate that here. And in one instance, come up with a 10, and the other instance, come up with a 2. There's just no way. We can plug different numbers in for x and y, but then we're not finding a solution to the system. So in that way, you can see 
uh, be pretty confident that there's just no way it's going to happen. There's just no solution. Uh, also, what's funny about this equation? That's false. It's false, right? The equation implies that it's equal, and this isn't. One more in our, in our case that we're building against this system, uh, one more piece of evidence. Uh, let me take each of these equations, the original uh, equations. I'm going to rewrite in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. This first one, I'll write it in green so that it's color coded. I'll subtract 3x from both sides, you get 2y equals negative 3x plus 10. Divide by 2 on both sides, y equals negative 3 halves x plus 5. All right, now I'll do the, the one in black. Subtract 3x from both sides, so again, we get 2y equals negative 3x, just like we did before, but plus 2. Divide by 2 on both sides, you get y equals negative 3 halves x plus 1. All right, so now these are all ready to go, ready to graph right, in our most familiar form. What do you think is going to happen when I graph these two lines? They're parallel. They're parallel. Right? Remember back to our first approach to solving systems, it was graphing. And we graphed both of those lines, and what did we look for when we were looking for the solution? What would they cross for? They cross. Parallel lines. What do you know about parallel lines? They never touch. They never touch. So they're just, well, if I graph them and the answer is where they cross, and they don't cross, there must be no, no answer, no solution. So you could just write no solution. You could write no solution. Yeah, three pieces of evidence, OK? One of them being, these are parallel lines. They'll never cross. And where they cross is where the solution should be. What did you do for down there in the green? Like, how did you switch that? Well, I took this equation, and I subtracted 3x from both sides. Minus 3x oh. minus 2x, you got here. OK. And you divide by 2. OK. Uh, so they're going to be parallel lines if we graph them, they won't cross. Here, when we uh, added them together, we got what kind of an equation? Point slope form. So you just got right here. Oh, false. False. It was a false equation. Right? Equals means equals. And these are not equal. So it's false. That them being parallel means there's no solution. This being false means there's no solution. And if we're just being, you know, plain old observant uh, and, and examining the equations we were given, we notice, as Clint pointed out, that 3x plus 2y and 3x plus 2y, that's the exact same thing. So I put in like 1 for x and uh, Let's see, that's going to be 3. 1, one for, for x and 1 for y. And uh, that's not going to work. 2 for x and 2 for y. y. I get 6 plus 4, and that would be 10. But if I put in 2 for x and 2 for y here, I'll get 10. But I'm supposed to get 2. Right? So it's not going to work. Uh, for this one, 0 and 2 will work. right? Or 1, sorry. 0 and 1. 0 oh. for x and 1 for y. So then 0 for x and 1 for y should work in this one as well. 0, uh, 1, no, that gives me 2. I'm supposed to get 10. There's just no way to make that work. I thought yesterday we were doing, we were plugging in like negative 1, like those numbers, multiplying each equation by those, but we only did 1. Do we do both of them? Like multiply both of them by number? We could. We don't need to. Like, we have done sufficient work. Uh, just multiplying by a negative, as you suggested, shows us, by way of this false equation, there's just no solution. There's, there's no way to approach this problem and find the answer. Okay. It just doesn't exist. There's no set of numbers, x and y, that works in both of these equations. Uh, so, no solution. If I were, I mean, I don't have to do this every time. If I were to try elimination and I got a false statement there, I'd say false, no solution. None of this stuff would exist. I would just do this work. It would be false. I would know that means. Really, what it what it tells me is what Clint said. That what I what I had was the same stuff over here, but different stuff here. There's just no set x and y that's going to work in both equations. It's impossible. Well, let's solve this system. This time we're going to have to multiply both equations by something in order to get the. How are you doing this as a group or by ourselves? Individually and then together. <laughs> so if we multiply this one by 2, as suggested earlier, and this one by 3, okay, 
do it however you want. You can do this by one half, this by one third, you can do this by four, this by six, uh, whatever you like. But in the end, what's going to happen is we're going to get exactly opposite things. We're going to get a negative 18x, and in the bottom, we're going to get a positive 18x. In the top equation, we're going to get a 12y, and then in the bottom, a negative 12y. Top equation, 36, yeah? So in the graph, it will be perpendicular. Will they be perpendicular? If they were perpendicular, right, they cross. How many places would these two perpendicular lines cross? One. One place, right? So that would be one solution, and so we would have found it. We would have just found a solution. But here, what we get is 0 equals 0. So it's the same line. It's the same line. If we graph these two lines, they just be right on top of each other. Is yeah. our homework just trying to figure out if they're false equations or true equations? Uh, well, your homework's going to be kind of the same as this past homework we just did with these in the mix, yeah. Okay. Uh, so how would we answer this? No solutions. Close. True. It's not all numbers, but there are how many solutions? Infinity. 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 Infinity solutions. Okay, so let me let me uh, point out the difference between a couple of things. Uh, this system having infinite solutions and an equation having infinite solutions, or we would just say like all the numbers work. Okay. That the first example is something like um, oh, two times three x plus 4 equals 6x plus 8. And we go to solve this equation, and we get 6x, and we distribute plus 8 equals 6x plus 8. And then we subtract 6x from both sides. Subtract 6x from both sides. We can just get 8 equals 8. Remember that happening? Mm -hmm. And we just had all real numbers. Because what that means is anything I plug in for x, any number I pick, 2 here, a 2 here, 5 here, 5 there, 7 there, 7 there. It's always going to be true. There is not just like one right answer for x, like there is a lot of times. When we're talking about two equations that both have two variables, we can't just say all numbers because there is, like for any x, there's a specific y that has to go with that x. Right. Okay. So in one way, we could, say, we, could, we could think of it like all real numbers, like any number I can plug it in for x, and that y that I get when I plug in that x will double as a solution to this equation. But we can't just say all real numbers. Because that implies just like throw any x, throw anything in there for x, and anything in there for y, infinite. but there are infinite. Yeah. So you would say infinite? You would just say infinitely many, and that would be good. Could you, you make say. the infinity sign? Mm, yeah, you could. And so you don't have to write it out. Infinite. Do we have an infinity drawing competition? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll okay. do it. Go. I thought like, what, what, oh, you want to see this sweet one? Let's see it. Look at that, that's amazing. See that? It's pretty pointy. That's a good one. All right, hold on. I got this. Yeah, I have the best. Hold on. Oh, hold on. I'm going to have the best one. I think I win. Hey, no, wait, you got to win. You want a great one? Right on the Kyler's. Kyler's won. I'll go for Kyler's. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Who's Kyler's? What a stud I am. Guess we don't have Wait, to say. Wait, 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 W